Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today we are going to be reading some rules horror. If you like, I, I like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Rules for your hospital stay. <clears throat> you wake up in a rather bright room. Everything is fuzzy, but you eventually regain focus and realize you are in a hospital. You can't remember anything ever happening to you, no matter how hard you try. A rather tall gentleman knocks on your door and walks in, presumably to check on you. He knows his tag has a picture of him, an eight-digit number instead of a name. You also take notice that he has an orange pin on his coat. Hey, you're finally awake. We were starting to worry that we had gotten gone to you too late. You realize he is your doctor, but what was he talking about? You try to speak, but your throat almost feels obstructed or blocked. Don't try to talk. We had to put a tube in your throat to help you breathe. Did he hesitate, or am I so disoriented? You look at him, unsure of how to feel about that short encounter. He walks up. up so about the middle of your bed, pulls the blanket down and moves your gown out of the way. You didn't realize that you had surgery. Pruned by a scar running up your left side from your hip to about how your six foot it would be. He examines the scar. You can't feel a thing. You two, it's a lot of very strong painkillers. Your incision site looks good, but I still want to keep you from monitoring. We still don't know about uh, the incident that have been occurring recently. I also want to provide you with this pamphlet. It contains some basic information and also a list of rules every patient in this hospital must follow if they want to keep the doctors and nurses happy. <clears throat> you take the pamphlet from his hands and think, what the hell kind of place is this? He tells you he'll be back in about two hours and leaves the room. You skip over the first few pages, and then you read the rules. Rule 1. This is not a normal hospital. It never was, and it never will be. We are called the Underground Reserve, and our name shall not be mentioned outside of these four walls. The consequences are unknown, but our patients, who have tried to report us to the police, have started showing up in the shadows of the fourth floor halls. Rule 2. You only have one doctor, and they will always be wearing a colored pin on their lab coat, as well as always having an 8-digit number on their ID card. The color will correspond with what floor you are recovering on. Green is the main floor, purple is the second floor, orange is, a, is the third floor, brown is the fourth floor, and pink is the fifth floor. If you see any other color, do the following. If it's yellow, you're okay. They're from the morgue. Don't speak to them, but don't be scared of them either. They aren't there for you. If it's red, you need to pretend and you're still unconscious. They won't mess with the ones who appear to be fresh. They can see you through the windows or through one in the door, so just pretend to be asleep before they walk in. If you hear the door... The door open, keep your eyes closed until it shuts again. If it is any other color, they don't have a pin at all, or the digits on their ID uh, contain more or less than 8 numbers, press your call button. It's located behind you on the same side as your incision. If your incision is in the middle of your body, it will be directly above your head. Somehow, they found out that you are awake. They are coming for you. They will pretend to be your doctor, but they will look ever so slightly different. Not enough to know is it before it's too late, though. Rule three: You are here because something got you. We don't exact. We don't know who or what it is. We don't know how it got to you, and we don't know why it owes you. 
we do know that you are extremely lucky to be alive. And because of that, you need to re you respect all hospital staff. You wouldn't want to make them mad after they saved your life, right? Rule 4. You will be given a menu every day you are here. We only have three dishes in our cafeteria. The salad, the turkey sandwich, and the soup of the day. If you ever see anything else, do not order it and inform your staff member who brings your, your meal. They will handle it. If the soup of the day is lentil soup, don't order anything until the next meal. Nothing is safe to consume except for water. You will not starve. You will not be hungry. Whatever they put in the IV bags in, on these specific days keeps you from starving or even feeling hungry. Rule 5. If you happen to be intubated, for communication purposes you are given commentary post notes and a pen, they're actually colored whatever floor you are. We are so sorry. Most patients who end up in a bit also set, end up staying for more than a week. Refer to Rule 7 for more information. Another note, any rule about food will not apply to you as you cannot eat until that tube is taken out. <sighs> On another note, any rule about food will not apply to you as you cannot eat until the tube is, at, is taken out. However, you need to pay attention to the liquid that nutrition bags they give you as these pose the same harm if the rules are not followed. Your nutrition and bag should always have a tag on it that is the same color as the floor you are on. If it doesn't, kindly let your doctor know they have the wrong room and they will fix it. If the tag is white, you are allowed to accept the bag. Just make sure you are especially kind to your doctor as they are being very generous to give you such good quality nutrition. You will still receive a menu if you are in intubated and if the soup is still, is, is still lentil, only accept bags with a clear, uncolored liquid inside. If they bring you anything else, kind of let the staff member know that you are feeling like very unwell and have been sick all day or night. They will understand that you will not receive anything for that meal. Rule 6. If you ever need anything, more pain meds, a blanket, socks, etc., click the white button on the railing of your bed. If there are ever two or more white buttons, press the black one instead. You'll be better off if you just press the black one. Rule 7. You should not be here more than a week. You have a calendar that at all automatically updates when the date is passed. So make sure you keep track of when you got here, and if by the seventh day they haven't given any discharge papers, you need to get out of there by any means necessary. Be it jumping out of a window or making a dead spread for the door, if you cannot get out, you need to hide under the bed and pray to whoever you believe in that they forget you ever existed. Once they forget, you will wake up in your room with no recollection of what happened. Don't ask how, just be glad they forgot, but as an alternative, it's something I wouldn't wish upon anyone. Rule 8. There is no 6th floor and there is no basement. If anyone tries to take you there, you need to press your call button and keep them occupied until help can get to you. Do anything and everything to not let them um, take you there. If you're about the 6th floor, whether it be by your own accord or someone else's, you need to find an imaging room, CT, X-ray, MRI, anything like that. It's get into the room, shut the door, grab the radiation coat, and turn the machine on as soon as possible. They don't like imaging. They don't want to be documented, and they will eventually leave. If you end up in the basement, your chances of survival are next to none, and I'm so sorry that there is nothing more we can do. We don't even know where the base was located. You have reached the end of the rules. 
Make sure you follow the easy order for your stay to be successful, comfortable, and somewhat tolerable. I finished reading the rest of the pamphlet, and it's mostly information about the rest of the hospital. Jeez. I am then interrupted by my doctor walking in a little sooner than I had expected him. Wait. Where's his pen? <sighs> Rules for the night's shift. Upon reaching the door to the a traveling park for my shift, I know what's left. I carefully read through the page. If you are reading this, it means you, uh, you have taken up guard duty at, at Fly Place, everyone's favorite trampoline park. Before you begin your nights here, allow me to give you some guidelines to follow by. Make sure to keep all doors and possible entrances locked at all times. In the case of a leak or emergency, contact me immediately. Follow a specific pattern to check every bit of the park every hour. Start in the lobby. Then go to the bathrooms and the birthday ba rooms. After that, you can check anywhere else. Just start your rounds with those areas first. When doing your rounds, do not turn on any lights and stay as quiet as possible. At midnight, you may or may not hear a banging on the door in the freezer from the kitchen. Ignore these sounds and do not check the freezer. They will start. They will stop shortly. At 12.55, before you start your first round through the building, don't let your guard down. At 1.30 a.m., double check under the trampolines. If you smell anything, ignore it. At 2 a.m., you might hear very, very huge and, and like sounds coming from the ceiling. Ignore them. Don't make any noise. Act like you aren't there. At 3 a.m., there are some influx in the drawer of, the, of your, your desk. Put them on before 3 a.m. <clears throat> Continue to write as of the night as normal. However, consider the following. Do not check in the freezer. Do not check in the ceiling tiles. Do not check in the closets in the party room. They're locked anyway. Do not check under the foam pit. Do not check anywhere beneath the dodgeball area. Do not check inside any ventilation systems no matter how hot or cold it gets. Do not call the police if you find anything strange. Call me instead. If you smell anything bad or strange at any time, ignore it. If you find any bones lying around, pick them up and dispose of them. They aren't real, I promise. Any rumors about people going missing here are not true. Thank you for taking up the shift. See you tomorrow. <clears throat> Welcome to your job at McDonald's. You walk into your new fast food job and see a note taped to the credit card reader. You pick it up to read. Hello there, I am Ronald McKenzie. I will be your supervisor. I get teased on occasion by some employees or customers since I am a manager at McDonald's with that name. I can assure you though that you don't want to end up like those people. In any case, you will be working our night shift. We are currently understaffed, so it's a further notice you will have just one other part-time worker. You will be a cook and cashier interchangeably. Before you begin, I should inform you on some employee rules and guidelines. Rules 1. Keep the customer service space. Keep a smile on at all the times when out front. Even if the restaurant is empty, you never know who's watching. 2. I'll visit at the restaurant every Thursday. If I don't show up, leave the front area and hide in the freezer. The cold repels whatever that thing is. Expect a phone call at midnight. Don't answer it. Answer the real one that will ring in at half past. If you receive no phone call, I am dead. You will also die by the end of the night if this is the case. For this show, please be sure that I am myself. I will be sure to appear the first Thursday. Thursday. And if in the future I look any different, you ought to shoot me. Or not up me, as that isn't me. 
Open the freezer door and I'll be in there. Don't ask, i tell you if I could. Three. We have a regular who comes in every e day but Thursday and Friday. His name is John Frum. Be nice to him. He always wants a Big Mac, medium fries, and a Coke. If he has square wop upper, give him a pound of the raw beef. If by any chance John comes on Thursday or Friday, be sure to redirect him across the, seat, uh, across the street. Failing to do so is fatal. 4. Do not disturb the thing in the events. It doesn't like that I've learned. 5. Currently, you will have a coworker who comes up in every Thursday and Wednesday. His name is Michael, goes by Mike. Be decent to him. If he appears on any other day, act as normal, but do not go home until at least four hours past your shift's scheduled ending. Six. We don't have any Fanta. Shoot anyone who asks. It's not illegal, as they would have killed you if you hadn't done anything. You'll notice that the corpse will rot immediately. Eight. If anyone asks why they are are here, tell them the date and time and advice. I say you're back at the exit by 8 a.m. Let's say be stuck here. That's roughly it. Enjoy your time here. Your supervisor, or Ronald. How did I mess up that one word? I know I already read this before, but found a page or part two to this, so we're going to reread that to get some context. School Code of Conduct for New Students Homework Diary Page 1 Enter the school quietly. Try not to make too much noise when putting down your bag or meeting a friend. We hate noise here. You must put your bag outside your as your class every morning. Bags will be put in alphabetical order. For example, if your name is, uh, is number 8 on the class list, then you place your, your bag under the 8th number by your gender. If number one is a male and number two is a female, number one will be placed by the male side for lineup, and number two will be placed on the female side. Three, always keep your bag neat and tidy. Four, we prefer if you stay in the quad opposed to inside in the mornings. You may sit by the lockers or in the bathrooms, but make sure you are not alone. Five, if you are alone inside during the morning, afternoon, or even evening, as some extra murals as violin and senior court. By your sights during the evening, make sure to take reality checks every few seconds. To do a reality check, look at the time I'm on your watch or phone. Look away and look back at the time. If the time is different, exit building into the quad. If the quad is out nearby, go into a nearby classroom. Find a liar sword in each classroom and exit through their window. Do not look at the clock up for the time unless you are in a girl's laboratory, hall, or kitchen. All clocks beside those are untrustworthy when school hours are over or haven't started. 9. Make sure to be in at least extra MRO. If you have no interest in any, despite the large variety, you may need to join detention. This rule is excused if you are able to leave every day before 3.30pm. Otherwise, you must be in one extra MRO, as we do not like students hanging around doing nothing. If you are caught off to school at an extramural detention past 3.30 EPM and you don't have any other, any later extramurals you are waiting for, you must go to the hall. No student leaves the hall for 24 hours after the first visit and no one is willing to talk about what goes on there. Not even me. 12. If you are alone at lunch, feel free to chat with one of the teachers. I would recommend me, your second language teacher, math teacher, or your English teacher. They are the sweetest and love it when students sit with them at lunch. 13. Please do not trust any of the GSS students, government sent students. They report everything said and done to the government, so I just saying away from them. Be polite if they talk to you, but briskly end the conversation. 14. Take the less than two minutes to find your book and take it out, which is why I wrote in Rule 3 to keep your bag neat and tidy. I suggest color coding your books according to each subject. Our teachers don't mind you taking long to do something, but they do. 
15. Do not ask who they are. All you need to do is that you need to be first quick change glasses, schoolwork, and presentations. 16. Keep your grades high. If they fall below 40%, you may need to go to the hall as if I see fit. 17. If you begin to feel drowsy or sleepy in class, tell your teacher. If they give you permission, you may put your head down, resting on your arms. Do not fall asleep, just rest. 18. Participate in class. They like it, but don't make your answer too complicated. 19. Our school has a uniform. Girls, black blazer with red cuffs, lighting, and with a school for edge. White buttoned up, why can I not say words, with the school badge, sorry. White buttoned up, up shirt with short sleeves, black and red pleats and, and high-waisted skirt. Black bar or lace-up shoes, gray knee-high socks. The jobs are loud, but they must be black or red. Black stockings may be worn. Winter, school blazer, long sleeve, white button up shirt, gray pants or gray skirt, black egg stockings or gray and thigh high socks to be worn with a uh, skirt. Gray socks to be worn with pants. Hijabs are, are a lot, but they must be gray, black, or red. Hair. Hair must always be e e clean and neat. Long hair, hair below the shoulders, must be put up. No improper hairstyles such as dreadlocks, ombre braids, mullets, jellyfish cuts may be worn. The jabs must have a cap of the same color underneath them. They may be worn in any style. Boys, school blazer, white button up shirt with short sleeves, either or gray or black, X short or long pants. Gray socks with red stripes must be worn with shorts. Plain red, black, or gray socks may be worn with long pants. Black lace up of shoes. The winter uniform is the same. Boys will wear shorts in the winter if they want to, but pairs of trousers will be given to those who don't have any. Hair must be neat and clean. Fades are allowed, but they must not show be a large difference from the side of the hair and and the top. Long hair at allowed, but must be tied up. No strange hair styles may be worn. Please follow all the dress code rules. If you don't, you may need to go to the hall. 16. Never enter the experimental hall on the second floor. Those are grade four, those are for grade, that's for grade 12s. If you are grade 12, only enter that room when your teacher tells you to. I read through the rules. Scoffing. Little did I know the horrors awaiting me through those wooden double doors. Now we get to what we were hoping for, what we're what we were waiting for. Page two. You know, if it ever loads. School rules, school code of conduct. Page two. Homework diary. Page two. Seventeen, which is which in classes, always know where you're going. If you don't know, ask someone or just follow someone. They could sense and search thee, and they hate it. Eighteen, if you're more of a loner, you may keep to yourself, but it will be better if you who try to be at least a little bit an outgoing. People may help you if they know all oh, that you are not a GS student and you are in a bit of a situation. Nineteen, at lunch, always leave a small bit at a food. Even if you or your parents packed it, heave of it like a crust on your bread or olives. Anything that you can share and, and throw oat and into the ditch outside Mr. Mi Mrs. Ismailite's classroom. Oopsie. Twenty. If you are registered as a boarding school student, refer to page twenty-three in this homework diary. So page twenty-three. Yet we will be getting that. Or once again at another time. 21. The library is out of bounds to anyone below the 6th grade. They have their own library, and they know this. If you see a grade 8, 5, or younger, tell them to leave. Be certain. If they don't, take the nearest item, be it a heavy book, a computer, your bag, anything, and throw it at them. 
they will either screech or dissipate. If they screech, refer to Rule 21A. If they a dissipate, refer to Rule, rule 21B. If they, they do anything else, maybe girl or just say put, refer to Rule 21C. 21A, they screech. You need to take whatever you throw at them and hit yourself repeatedly in one area until you start bleeding. Hopefully you throw something sharp at them. If it's not working and you're not bleeding, like take a sharp object and touch it to the object you threw and then cut yourself in an area where you will not bleed out. Drop one drop of blood uh, as near or to each other as you can. They will immediately stop and leave. Clean up and act as if this never happened. 21B! If they dissipate, you're safe. Take whatever you do carefully and replace Place it where it was. If it's broken, do it anyway. We don't mind. 21C. If there's anything else, you need to run as fast as you can into the quad, where hopefully some people would be. If there's no one, sit on the floor. Take anything you can draw, even if it's your blood, and make a circle around yourself. Be quick. Sit in the middle of the circle and breathe deeply. Focus on owning your breath. Do not open your eyes. If it is morning, stay like that until someone arrives. If it is a G as a student, close your eyes again and continue until someone else arrives. If it is afternoon, keep your eyes closed until the sunset. And if it is night, keep your eyes closed until sunrise. Do not fall asleep, but stay calm. 22. Please be respectful to your teachers. 23. You may talk in class once your work is done. If you are talking and your work is done and you suggest you to stop, run them quietly that you're finished. They would not be rude. If they persist, say, do you need, you need to get something to eat? They will leave the classroom for a few minutes. 24. If someone says, do you need something to eat? To you, stop what you're doing, calm down, and then walk away. 25. If someone is getting worked up, ask them if they need something to eat. They could sense anger, and if you want to see you appear again, please follow this rule. How long is this list? We're already at half an hour. We still have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six of these left? Oh, we don't need the comments. <sighs> Children's literature. No one knows when it first started. Even if we knew, it would have been impossible to prevent. It was in 2019 when it was first spotted. A mother looked over her child's shoulder while she was reading and noticed something wrong. All the words on the pages were replaced with a list of rules. One, praise the king. Two, worship the king. Three, prepare for his arrival. The mother was confused and took the book away. As she flipped through the book, she realized every page had the words replaced. The same lines repeated over and over. One, praise the king. Two, worship the king. Three, prepare for his arrival. It was too delivered to be a printing error. She shared photos of the books with her neighbors, which caused them to look through their child's books. To all the, of their horror, every line in the book was the same. They were trying to keep the books away from their children, but that, it couldn't stop them. The kids seemed to possess inhuman strength and intelligence for their age. They would always find a way to get the books back and continue reading them. 1. Praise the king. 2. Worship the king. 3. Prepare for his arrival. The children have begun gathering in the streets with their books and shaking those lines in unison. It doesn't look like just a group of kids playing games. When I looked into their eyes, it felt like something was missing from them. Each day, the sky gets more overcast. It's impossible to tell night from day. No one is able to enter or leave our town. Electricity has been cut off for most people by now, so this is likely my last chance to reach the outside world. Whatever this king is, I hope it has mercy on us. We're already far beyond the threshold where I can say this.
Rules for what the fuck? This is a safe place. I'm sorry, hang on. This is a safe place. I'm listening to you, the therapist said, gesturing to his patient to begin talking. Brick shifted her head in her chair. She was not very comfortable talking to the therapist. She was intensely afraid of all other humans, even her own family. Hmm. Can I leave now? Brick asked. She looked at the time on her phone worriedly. It was 10.56. She started sweating, but did her best not to show how scared she was. The therapist sighed. It's alright if you aren't uncomfortable, but just give it a shot. I promise I can help. He stood up and revealed a crumbled piece of paper. If you ever feel unsafe, follow these rules. They're a guide for surviving any situation. He placed paper in the hand of Brick, knowing and very well he exaggerated how useful the guide was. It was simply a guide on deep breathing and preventing panic attacks. But I wanted to stress the simplicity of therapy. It was nothing to fear. Abruptly, Brick stood up and dashed out the door. Yelling, I'm going to the bathroom, as she sh let, slammed the door shut. The hall of the therapy facility was extremely friendly. Rick heard the e chatter of children playing board games in another room, the receptionist answering phone calls, and soft piano music playing for a patient who had recently overcome a physical disability. However, Brick was not soothed by any of this. She dashed into the isolated third floor bathroom and pulled the sh door shut. Brick checked her phone. 10.59. She dreaded what was about to happen. She almost hoped that wouldn't happen today. Brick silently walked to the small window looking into the courtyard. In the courtyard, patients strolled alongside the grass and made small talk with each other. Discussing the news or weather or whatever people pretend to enjoy talking about. She peeked down at her, her phone again. 11 o'clock. In the courtyard, the patient's flesh ripped apart, and they transformed into hideous monsters with expressionless faces. As if a bomb had exploded, chaos and screaming split right and threw out the building and split sent again. The monsters tore each other apart, slashing at each other with huge claws. Sometimes, wood monster would kill smaller monsters nearby, and Brick would have to look away. The courtyard was filled with carnage and loose skin on the floor. Brick rushed into the furthest saw in the bathroom door and locked herself in die. Inside, she heard clanging and scratching in the hallway outside. She heard something enter the bathroom, slamming the door open and stomping inside. She saw the, the shadow of the creature outside her door. Why was it waiting in the bathroom? Usually they... They went to the street. It's to buy and scratch each other. Did this one know she was in here? Or was it just random chance? She silently unraveled the paper the therapist had given her. She only had to wait for 10 minutes for the monsters to turn back. She stared at the paper in disbelief. The paper was scribbled all over any creepy pictures and its evil sounding words. The ritual uh, title, Rules for Meditation, was scribbled out. In its place, the title, Rules for What the Fuck, were present. And the paper's original rules were, complete, were almost completely scratched away. Had someone used some very long nails to write their own rules. Rules for what the fuck? Be rule one: Be comfortable where you are. Rule two: Try to pay 
Be alert. Try to pay attention. Be angry. Biting, scratching. What the fuck? Rule three. Be patient. Need to wait. Ten minutes. Skin. Rule four. Take deep breaths. Fill your sack when you breathe in. Don't let me hear you. Rule five. Turn off your phone to meditate. These rules have no purpose. The rest of the rules continue like that. Freak didn't know whether to laugh or cry at her ridiculous situation. She could die in the next 10 seconds, and here she was trying to read a guide on meditation. Not even a guide on meditation, a paper of insane ramblings for something she couldn't even begin to understand. However, when Burke looked at the saw, she realized something had written on the wall in pen. She heard the raspy breathing of the monster on the other side of the saw. Brick read the rules. Rules for surviving in the stall. The monster should be outside. As a rule of thumb, try stay in isolated areas away from the huge crowds. 2. Don't check your phone while they're around. If you get a call, immediately reject it. Your phone has a little bit of flesh inside of it. It can transform the same way they do. 3. Do not turn on running water or flush the toilet. It will start filling the bowl with blood and eyeballs in it. Those eyes can see you. 4. If you read things written in scratches, try to ignore them. Those are not written by a human. 5. The monsters can't talk, but they can cry and yell nonsense. It needs a great aid to tell if the person you hear is real or not, just listen to how they talk. If they talk calmly, they can't be a monster. Frick heard someone talking outside of the stall. Rules for the friend. Hello? I can see your feet under the stall. I'm not one of them. They're all outside. If you think I'm a monster, then yell out at me and I'll leave. 2. Hey, if this, this is my regular hiding spot, can you let me in? Oh, I have another rule here for you. If you see someone enter with red shoes, they're real. If they have blue shoes, they're just pretending to be human. It's a cool rule. Write that on the wall, will you? My shoes are red, see? 3. Okay, quiet treatment then. I'll give you more tips on how to survive. I do this every day. If you see a door appear in the bathroom wall, do not enter it. It will fall straight into the basement. 4. Just like to myself, I guess. If you ever come face to face with a monster, try to run away into a crowd of monsters. They're more focused on killing each other rather than you. Instructions for opening a locked bathroom stall door. Oh dear, this is going to be just rules and rules and rules. 1. Find the lock on the door. If the lever is up, push up on the door and open it immediately. 2. If the lever is not up, grab it inside to the right. Flip it when it reaches the end, then proceed with rule 1. 3. In the event the door is stuck because a large object is in the way, such as the person not locking the door from the other side, Ask for to move or crawl onto the stall into the next one over. Instructions for crawling on, the ba on a bathroom floor. Get down and on the floor and begin move to move using your elbows and knees. Try to squeeze underneath the stall door. Avoid getting your face close to the floor to minimize accidental contact. Make sure the uh, other side of the stall is clear when you emerge. If you see something on your side, uh, well, yes, to move so you can continue crawling. Guide to painting portraits. One, when painting, start off by setting an under a color or of the skin tone of the face. In this case, we'll, we will be using a pale red to show the raw bloody skin of our subject. Two, in the second step of the painting, begin to make the shadows and highlights 
eyes of the face with broad shapes. Here we'll be showing the darkness of this face in the neon lit bathroom and making the eyes the center of attention using bright strokes of startling white. 3. Render the details of the, of the painting, in this case the subject's teeth, must all be rendered using very sharp brush strokes, and the claws will be detailed and using the actual shades of gray and white. The claws, in this case, will occupy a large portion of the canvas, dragging along the floor and leaving marks. Rules for destroying bricks. Bricks can be easily be destroyed using blunt force. They are commonly destroyed on accident when they are dropped. Bricks will not bleed when cut. Bricks will not tear when bitten. Bricks do not have layers of flesh. Rules for June 14th. The city has declared emergency. Today, the body of a girl was found in the third floor bathroom stall of a mental health center at 11.10 n. All citizens must stay inside until further notice. While well, nothing out of the order ordinary happened that day, Brick's death was extraordinary, seemingly happening in a secure location. Oh, rest in peace, Brick. The city has been a day that all children may not be left unattended. 3. Our detectives have found no set of leads other than bite marks on the body. It has been determined that this death was the result of a freak bear accident. All bears must be shot on site within city premises. The federal government has decided to build a series of interlocking walls around the city to prevent citizens from leaving. Citizens caught trying to escape will receive the death penalty. That was a bit longer than I expected. It was now 42 minutes. Actually, we're going to have to end the video here. If you like, like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I now have, know exactly what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!